I don't look up to anyone, first of all. I'm too old for that. <laughs> and you know, that, that concept, that changes. I used to look up when it died and I was <laughs> So then that changes as you grow older. Which writers? But there are some writers who, the way I look at it is you find comfort with you know, that, that somehow you, you can admire but you don't look up. You know. uh, I, I think Joseph Conrad was one writer who, to whom I have repeatedly gone back. And you will notice the writers that I, and then there was Dostoevsky. Gurki, when he was not overtly political, but sometimes he was into, I think, a kind of, uh, well, I think most of us know that. But still, the fact that Gurki, what he accomplished was that uh, he wrote about a group of people, his people, the Kikuyu. And, you know, he gave them life, he gave them an interpretation. Uh, and that I found, I, I found very comforting that. Because I was also, when I started out especially, writing about a small a community of people. And, uh, and you wonder, what, who, who on earth cares about that? And then you realize that in fact everybody starts with their own group of, their own experiences. They may call it mainstream, but you know, when people ask me, I tell them, you know, the wasps are as, as ethnic as the Chinese, and everyone is ethnic. So, it's, it's how you uh, deal with it. Uh, I don't know, so wanted a way. So there was Dostoevsky, Conrad, uh, Graham Greene sometimes, uh, Googie, and uh, also Philip Roth, you know, an American writer. So he again went, uh, he somehow goes on and on, but uh, basically he uh, again, uh, for me it was Dar es Salaam and Uhuru Street, for him it was Newark, uh, you know. <laughs> and the Newark city just uh, honored him, I don't know, they put a statue of him, so maybe Dar es Salaam there. Put your na <laughs> you can suggest Nazimonia in my book. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, what you look in a writer is some similarities, but not complete adulation or copying or you know, because uh, you know, everyone is different. I just know Googie Goods here, yeah? although you know, I. You know, I've had some problems, but still a great writer. And uh, I changed a little bit, Shoinka. I, I wish I had new, younger writers. But there was one young writer whom actually I uh, helped to bring about. She was in Toronto. She sent me uh, uh, some stories uh, to, to publish in our magazine. And uh, she said, but I have other stories too. So I said, why don't you send me all of them? And she sent me all of them. And she was from Zimbabwe. So I said, uh, why don't you bring them out in a book? So she said, can I do that? I said, yes. Uh, and then you know, so we picked a title for the book. It was called, Why Don't You Carve Other Animals? You know, it's by Ivan Vera. And uh, then she went back to Zimbabwe. And uh, she became, she's considered one of the more important uh, African women right now. So yeah, I, I, I take some pride in <laughs> and courage. But unfortunately, she died about six, seven years ago. Yvonne Vera. V-E-R-A. So you know, in that form, I read the new writers. Uh, yeah, but you start initially, for example, in a place like Tanzania, which is a few years behind Kenya. You know, with uh, literary magazines. A uh, literary magazine is like, it's, it's, a, it's a published, a publishing venue where there's an editor who doesn't publish just anything that comes, but who, you know, again, vets it, edits it, advises people, has, sets a certain standard, editorial standard, and quality standard, and then from then you can, uh, that can go on to a, a publishing house. And then you move on. Like when we started our literary magazine, as I said, it was a mad venture. But after five years, we somehow thought, why not start publishing books? So we went into that. So it's been 25 years now, 100 books, more than 100 books. 
But you, well, you can do it that way, you don't have to somehow start with a major. See, the problem is many people think we we'll start up with something major, profit making. You know, a poetry title in Canada, if you sell 300 to 400 copies, you're happy. That's what poetry is. But if the right 300 or 400 people buy it, that makes the difference. And then the poet can move on to another book. 